One of the most commonly used functions in Excel is the AutoSum function. You use this function to add a range of values. You will find the AutoSum command in a couple of different places. It's located here on the Home tab of the ribbon in the Editing group right here, as well as you'll also find it on the Formulas tab in the Function Library group right here. Let me go ahead and demonstrate this function and then we will apply it to our project. Notice that I have the SW Inc. Sales spreadsheet open on my screen. And here we have a sales column, a tax column, and a total sales column. Let's go ahead and sum up each of these three columns. To do that, first position your cursor underneath the first column. We'll sum up sales. So we'll position it right here in E13. Then come up here to your auto sum command select it by single clicking and notice that Excel immediately inputs in the function syntax for the sum function and it is the word sum parentheses and then a range and notice that the range is automatically highlighted in this formula and then an ending parenthesis now the range is reflected here in the marquee notice that it has a start cell reference of E4, which is right here, and an ending cell reference of E12, which is right here. Now let's say that we wanted to adjust this range. Excel made its best guess, and this is pretty much what we want, but we want it to end at E11. So if you position your cursor on one of the handles down at the bottom of the range so that you get this double arrow tool, click and drag up, you can adjust the range, and notice that it is reflected here in the formula as well. Go ahead and press Enter, and we will input in the function and it will tally up what the sum of the sales column is. Let's do the same for taxes. So we'll position our cursor right here in F13, then come up again to auto sum, select it by clicking, and notice again it indicates our range. I'll come over here and adjust the range so that it goes to F11 and not F12, and then press enter to enter my formula. And finally I'll go ahead and sum up the total sales column. Again, position my cursor underneath the range of values that I'd like to sum, and then come up here to Auto Sum, click the Auto Sum button, and notice that Excel made its best guess to be the range of cells just to the left here, which would be E13 and F13, which would give us the correct sum because it's the total of the sales and the tax, which is what this column tallies up from the left. So we can keep that or just to show that you can select an entirely new area for your range, notice if I come up here to G11 and click and drag and pull up to G4, I've now changed my range to indicate G4 to G11 and I'll go ahead and enter that and there is my totals results. Now let's go ahead and apply this to our project. Please open up your sales monthly worksheet or if you'd like to start with a file that reflects the development up to this point in the class you can go ahead and open up the 0807 start file. This opens up our monthly sales worksheet. Notice that we have it set up with the product list as well as the quantity that was sold in week one which is what worksheet we are on. We have the unit price and the sales price for the individual product and then we set up a simple formula that tallies what the quantity is times the sales price. Well let's go ahead and insert a new column that will allow us to add up what the quantity was times the unit price so we know what we spent for an inventory and we can compare that to our total sales to find out exactly what our profit is. So let's go ahead and choose all of column D, right click and choose insert. This will insert a new column between column C and column E and then set your cursor in D7 and let's go ahead and type in total unit cost. Notice that we need to format that so it will wrap around in this cell. So on your home tab of your ribbon, remember you have the wrap text command. Go ahead and select that to wrap that around. And then let's also go ahead and position our centering of the cell so that it's down at the bottom, which would be this one. And we'll go ahead and 
now work on our unit cost. So let's very quickly create a formula that is going to calculate the unit sales right here. This would be B8 times the unit cost of the product. So let's go ahead and type in equals. Click on B8. Go ahead and indicate multiplication by typing in the asterisk and then click on C8 and let's enter that. Now let's go ahead and fill this formula all the way to the bottom of our spreadsheet data. There it is and now we have two columns that we can tally. We can tally the total unit cost as well as and let's rename this from total to total sales. And now Again, come down here to the very bottom of your spreadsheet data and let's go ahead and set our cursor in D38 and let's choose the auto sum function command. There it is and notice it's indicating D8 to D37. Let's adjust that so it is D36 by grabbing the handle and dragging up. So let's double check that D8 is what we want and you can see by the marquee or the highlight here that that's exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and enter it and let's do the same over here for our total sales and we'll see what the difference is from the total cost of the products sold to the total amount of sales collected for those products. So we'll again we'll go ahead and click on the sum function and again it's showing F8 to F37. Let's adjust that so it is to F36 and enter the data. And that is how you use the auto sum. You'll find that it's probably the most commonly used function in Microsoft Excel. Go ahead and save your worksheet and let's move on to the next movie.